In our current media landscape, built on existing IPs, reboots, and revivals, the new Futurama season was not a surprise. Unlike the announcements of other revivals that make me either cautiously optimistic or outwardly roll my eyes, I feel a lot more confident in Futurama. Probably because of the show's track record, this is after all the third revival it's had. Now that the new season is wrapped up, it's time to look at what we got and discuss the highs and lows, see how it stacks up. I'm not going to be going through episode by episode, but I will be highlighting the points that I think stood out. Let's do this. If we're going to talk about the new season of a show, it just makes the most sense to me that we start with the finale. I'm kidding. I'm a funny guy. Laugh. When Futurama put out its season 10 finale, meanwhile, the writers were smart enough to give themselves an opening for a new start, but building from there, where do they go? They, in my opinion, made the right move in going straight into a regular episode, with only a small moment actually picking up from the finale. Not ignoring it, but not dwelling on it. We're back, baby! To me, it read as the team not losing its sense of what the show is at its core, and the tone felt right. The episode itself goes hard on meta jokes about the renewal, but in a way that really works. I feel like they succeed in pulling off the move where the joke is funny, then it gets into overplayed, but then quickly passes that right back into funny. Most importantly, they did a great job with Fry and Lilo's relationship. It felt to have been moved forward, not just keeping it at the status quo. Futurama has had a lot of emotional episodes over the years. This season added to the list with Children of Lesser Bog. I will say it's not at the same level as a Jurassic Bark or Luck of the Frylish, but it is really solid. And I don't think it is shooting to be that kind of episode either though, so making the comparison isn't fair. This one is doing its own thing and succeeding at it. I really appreciate how the show tackles the struggles of a parent going through being away from their kids and the ones they go through being the parent that is with them. I don't have kids myself, so I can't speak to the truth of it, but it does seem to echo what I've been told from parents, so it's worth mentioning. Of course, each individual's mileage may vary. I will say I kind of wish this one was a two-parter, giving it more room to live in the heavier emotional moments without giving up on the show's signature joke density. Uh, let me know if you felt the same way. Okay, I want to talk about the Parasite episode this season. I've seen reviews and discussions around how this episode is in a way a sequel to Parasites Lost, and in doing so, compare the episode to it and how it doesn't live up. I get why you do that, as they are connected, but it feels a bit off to me. Parasites Lost is, at its core, a relationship episode. It uses the inner space style parody to tell that story, but it is in service of the Fry and Lilo relationship. The follow-up, Parasites Regained, from this season is a play on Dune. So while the episodes do use some of the same elements, I don't think that they should be compared so harshly. Now you may disagree with me, but that's my point of view, and the discourse on the comparisons I've seen do take away from judging this episode on its own, so I'm going to. While I do prefer when Futurama does pastiche parodies of other media, I do think they do a good job of sending up Dune in this. I think they had a lot of solid jokes all the way through, I laughed out loud seeing Kyle McLaughlin's name in the credits. He seems like a great sport, and I really like the episode's ending. Finding out the parasites have parasites is good, and you expect them to shrink down smaller to deal with them. Maybe even have like a montage as you find out each layer of parasite has its own parasite over and over and over. But they went with a subversion and just started smashing them. Not that kind of smashing. The internet really has changed language. But that ending caught me off guard, and the way they left red blood-like stains as they were getting crushed added an extra little layer that I really enjoyed. So, uh, so while I've been editing, I watched the video Johnny Two Cellos did about this episode, and he pointed out something that I completely missed and feel stupid for missing about how both Parasite episodes are about it happening to Leela's loved ones and how it affects her. And I do think that is a fun way to thematically link them as sequels beyond just it being like, oh, Parasites again. I'm feeling kind of dumb for missing it at the time, but I wanted to mention it now. Back to the video. 
It really should be mentioned how topical this season was. Now, this isn't a new phenomenon. Futurama has always reinterpreted our modern day into its story. Hell, sci-fi has always had that history of using otherworldly concepts to reflect our current world, but... Jesus Christ. Does it feel like this season really ran with it? It's an overall mixed bag. I liked the Crypto episode, for example where they use it as a jumping off point to do a Wild West episode. If they had just played crypto mining straight, it would have felt a lot more flat. And I say that with confidence because this is how the pandemic episode went. It had some individual funny lines that landed. I personally liked Tushy My Ass. <laughs> But the plot itself didn't work. The episode didn't have an angle or commentary to it, and it was just the same sort of discourse we've been having everywhere over the past few years. So without bringing anything new to the table, it felt stale. Personally, I think if they had focused on a story about the spread of information built on a pandemic-inspired allegory, and went off with that, probably do an inspiration from a classic sci-fi film if they can, it would have done a much better job. Then we have Zapped Gets Cancelled. I do like this one, especially more than the pandemic one, and I think a lot of that comes from the fact that it's about more than just cancel culture. Leela's storyline and the way it highlights Starfleet, I mean dupes, Hypocrisy works both as a compliment and as a way to break up the Zap plot. And the Zap plot itself does feel like a culmination of his character, as if they were building towards it for years, even though clearly at the time they were just doing it for laughs. Also, Dr. Kind, his character design, loved it. Now, there are other episodes that I haven't talked about in this video, and I do want to touch on them quickly because I don't think any of them are bad. I enjoyed all of them. Solid jokes. Good overall vibes. I like that the Amazon parody episode pushed the Fry and Leela story further with them moving in together. But other than that, I don't think any of them were worth talking about. None of them gave me overall great impressions where I was like, wow, they're really doing something crazy here and at the same time none of them made me feel as outwardly disappointed as some of these episodes have been. The toy episode might be the worst episode that Futurama has ever made. Definitely the worst of the season and it's a real letdown because the crew becoming toys as the description put it sounded like a lot of fun to me. Let's get the positives out now because there are things worth mentioning. I found the individual vignettes charming, they each took a different old-fashioned toy, subverted expectations with them, but the problem is that that led nowhere. They did not tie in thematically to the framing story at all. If they just wanted to do these shorts, then the framing should either have less of a narrative of its own, or just don't do one. It's like they've learned nothing from Treehouse of Horror. I think the worst part was that the story of the framing device is such a letdown. By nature of what they were doing, it either needed to have no stakes or be colossally world-ending, but cutting off at all the big action beats. Instead, they went with a Fry and Leela story where she falls in love with a prince by what turns out to be a magic, I mean, science spell. With all the work this season has put into advancing their storyline in interesting ways, making their relationship's first real hurdle this was so disappointing. I can see how they would be going for a deconstruction, playing like a parody of relationship drama, but it just didn't work for me. Futurama as a show is better than what we got here. And then we have the finale all the way down. I have to say this was absolutely the best episode of the season, and I am not the only one to think that. It does follow the tried and true formula of what makes a great episode. It takes on a classic philosophical sci-fi concept and puts all of its natural Futurama-isms into it. It's funny, it tackles the themes well without getting too heady but without ignoring the concepts that they are trying to tackle really just works. It makes sense that David X. Cohen wrote this one. Futurama is, in many ways, his baby. 
It also makes sense to put this at the end of the season so that way you are excited and wanting more to make sure that you'll tune in when they put out more episodes in the future. And honestly, I'm kind of disappointed with this season as a whole, and it bums me out. Like, I know negative reactions to things do well on YouTube, but that's not what I want to make. I'm a guy trying to find the good in modern Simpsons. I want to like the stuff I'm watching. But I do think this season was a letdown. Futurama has had such a great track record, even with all its cancellations. But, you know, the higher the highs, the bigger the fall. All that. I hope we can blame the lows on time crunch, mini rooms, and all the other terrible working conditions that writers are currently striking over, but I can't just assume it is as a way to justify my feelings. I will say I think the biggest issue I have is seeing the good in the season. Episode to episode, there are solid jokes throughout, and I really appreciate the advances they have made not only to Fry and Leela, but to Amy and her family as well. I can see the potential of this season, not only because I've seen past seasons of Futurama, but because this one isn't a full-on failure. I know there's another 10 episode season we're getting, so hopefully it will build off the good parts of this season and give us another banger season like we've gotten in the past. That's what I'm hoping for anyways. And yeah, I know that technically those episodes have already been worked on because they were all from the same production order, but that doesn't mean that they can't make changes after the reception. The episodes aren't done until they're out, let's be honest. But that's enough from me. It's time to hear from you in the comments what you liked about the season, what you didn't like, but actually more just what you liked. I know there's a lot of talk about what the season has done wrong online, so if you have something that you loved about this season, please let me know. If it's something I mentioned, if it's something I didn't, you know, we, we just gotta have less of a storm cloud over us at all times, you know? If this is my first video of yours, I've got plenty more up. I'll put some on screen here. You can like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. And I've got another video coming out soon, so until then, have a good one.